me. My name is Justine. I have, I taught Tantra for over a decade. I ran teacher trainings, ran a bunch of workshops. I've probably worked with thousands of people at this point. I've been in the realm of personal development, specifically working with conscious sexuality and relationships for over 15 years now. And now I run groups online as well as doing one-on-one -on -one or, or couples coaching. And I would say the two of the main things that I use when helping people with their relationships, one is understanding the difference between men and women on a biological level and a hormonal level of how our brain is structured and then how that shows up in the daily life. And the other main tool that I use is attachment style theory and then all kinds of stuff in the middle. So what I ask for tonight, since this is an impromptu lecture, that it's an interview with you and me. So those of you who can turn your cameras on, that would be fantastic. And I also would like to hear why you're here. What brought you here? Because when I, I know about the email that went out and there's several different points that I can speak to, but if there was something in particular that made you wanna show up to this call, I would start by addressing that point. So why are you here? What do you hope to learn? What do you wanna get out of this next hour that we have together? And you are welcome to write it in or you can unmute. And also if you have any questions along the way, that will be my interview. So please, interested in the topic and learning. The topic of, which topic did you show up for? Because there were many there about how she, your woman, how to support your woman so that she can feel really safe and feels like she can rely on you how to turn her on, how to help her relax, how to regain trust and respect that has been lost. Okay, good one. All right, do you guys wanna start there? The title, How to Gain My Woman's Inner Trust. Okay, excellent. So let's, I like that, that's a good one. So with, one of the things that I have gone through with men is being able to build it in the little moments. So something that happens is if you do something, we will often make that mean something bigger. Let me see if I can come up with an example of what I'm talking about. Um, I know some, I, I'm having a hard time coming with an exact example on the spot right now, but if you do something, a woman might often be like, well, now you see, this is why I don't wanna have kids with you. Or this is why I can't rely on you. And it was just a little tiny thing. So what's important is that she is able to trust you and your word and your follow through. So to be able to do that, it's really important that you do not agree to things that you don't really want to do because you're going to have a harder time committing to that. So sometimes what I see happening is that men will say, okay, yes, I'll do it because you want to, you want to make her happy but there's something inside of you that's not fully on board with it, or you're not able to estimate the time correctly and do it, but you really have the ambition to, you want to, the intention is there, but realistically it may not happen. And more often than not, what I see happening is somebody saying yes, because they want to avoid the conflict, but then it's just postponing the conflict and it's actually making the conflict bigger. So being able to should have build up a reliability where she can trust your word. Now, what's important is that how you are towards yourself is also going to be impacting her. So if you set an intention, like tomorrow, I'm going to meditate and I'm going to start my meditation practice. I'm going to meditate for half an hour every single day. And you make it one day or you make it one week and then you stop, or you set an intention for how you're going to eat healthy or something else that you're going to do and you don't follow through with that, and it's something that's really important to you, then her mind might start going, if he can't do what's important for him, how's he gonna do something that's important for me? And I won't be able to rely on her for that. So that's something else that can come up here. And then what happens also is I wanna talk about how women will anticipate either your success 
and get excited about it or they anticipate the disappointment. So where I see this happening the most is when it comes to the weekend plans. And this is if you're in a relationship or if you're dating. So women are starting to think about the weekend on Tuesday or Monday or Saturday, <laughs> Saturday night if you had a date on Friday. And so what happens is that the, with their mind and the way that they're already focusing ahead and wanting to get excited about that date, but you aren't asking her out on the date. You aren't initiating that date because you're focused on your week. You're at work. You're working on your work. You're focused there. Then it's Thursday. Then it's Friday. And you're like, ah, tomorrow's the weekend. I'm going to give her a call or I'm going to start to plan the weekend. Now, at that point, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, she's already been thinking about the weekend. and She's wondering if you're going to take an initiative or if you're going to ask her out or if it's just all going to be on her. And so she has started to anticipate disappointment, which is going to start to make her really frustrated. She doesn't understand that you're in the work zone. And when you're finished with the work zone, then you're going to see the weekend because your brain works differently. And so if you can plan the date on Tuesday or Monday or when early on, then during that whole week, she's going to be, to, she's going to be anticipating the date or the weekend fun. That's going to be producing oxytocin in her body every day when she gets to know that she's got something to look forward to. So as much as you can help her to anticipate that her needs are going to be met, whatever it is, that's going to help her. So for instance, if she wants to talk, but you can't talk in that moment, then if you can say, hey, I'm busy right now, I can't talk now, I'll talk, we can talk later, that leaves her open. Like, is he gonna forget? Is he gonna follow through? Is he gonna start the conversation? But if you said, let's talk tonight at five or let's talk at dinner, or, let's talk tomorrow night, I'm gonna be free then, then she knows when her needs are gonna be met and that's going to then get to start to produce the oxytocin. And oxytocin is one of the most important hormones for her and for you for her to be producing. When she's got a lot of oxytocin, she's gonna be happy, it's the love hormone. And also the more oxytocin she has in her body, the more pleasure she's going to feel when you're making love to her, the more orgasms she's going to have, and just generally the more relaxed she is going to be. So her producing oxytocin is going to be very important for the harmony and also the sexual connection between you and her. With one of my clients, he was somebody who, he had a lot of success in life. He was, he had good friends. He had a really great relationship with his family, like his brothers and his sisters. He was very successful. He was a CEO and yet he was struggling in his relationship. So he was leading the way in many other areas of life, but in his relationship, he was really struggling there. And he didn't realize that his wife, when she said, I can't trust you, he's like, how can you not trust me? I'm providing you with so much. What's not trustworthy about me? I've never cheated on you. What is not trustworthy about me? But he didn't recognize that when he wasn't following through in each of these little situations, whether it was about he would pick something up from the store or what he said that he would consider something around making her something for dinner or following through with something with the kids, that each of those little things that he said he would do that he wasn't following through on was making her not be able to trust him. And when he started to do each of those little things, he goes, I've just started to do a few little things and it already has a huge impact on her. She's so much more relaxed, open, She's more connected to me. She's more patient with me because of these little things. And so he started to describe it to me uh, as compound interest. So I got some investing lessons while I gave him relationship lessons. And he goes, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here is having a big effect on my relationship. And then that was motivating for him. So that was, is my first dive into this topic. Are there any other questions or things that you want me to speak further on of what I just went into? And feel free to put your questions in the, the chat as I'm going as well, because then I can pause sometimes or I can look or also feel free to unmute and have a conversation with me if you want and ask a question that way. 
So what landed there in the things that I just talked about around how she can have trust for you, respect you? Okay, I'll go into the, the okay. This makes perfect sense regarding the oxytocin levels. What if somehow the weekend plans need to be canceled for some urgent reason? I would call up, explain the reason, explain, like apologize that, you know what, this has come up. I really wanna take you out, schedule the next date right away if you can. So again, she knows, all right, it has to, ha we have, this has to be canceled now, but the next time we're gonna be able to go at this. So she knows when that need is going to happen. And yeah, emergencies happen. So one of the questions that came through was how to regain trust and respect that has been lost. So first is accountability. Um, the thing is, is that in order to start to trust somebody again, you want to know that they learned, they understand that what happened wasn't okay. And so if you can take accountability for your part, accountability and empathy are always going to be the two best approaches to any conflict. So empathize with her, what her experience is, what she might be feeling. So go into the emotions, go into the beliefs, the doubts, the lack of distrust. You know, maybe, you know, you might be feeling like you're all alone. You might be feeling like I don't care. You might be feeling, and you just put it out there of how you think she might be feeling, but asking it with a question, not telling her that that's what's going on. And I can imagine that this is what's going on for you and then come to the level of accountability. So, you know, I, I really just wanna take accountability for this, this, and this, and I apologize for this. And the reason that an apology is so important and impactful is because it helps somebody to have trust that it's not going to happen again in the future. And then you can also ask, what is it that you need from me to be able to start to trust me again? And very often, if you ask women a question around how to move through a conflict, so for instance, you're in a conflict, you're like, what would be a really good thing to say right here? Or how can I support you in this moment? When, you're, when she's upset with you for how you did something, ask her, what would have been a better way for me to have done that? How could I have better addressed it? What could I have said? A lot of times women are going to give you that information of what they would have really liked for you to have done or for you to have said to them, they'll give you the exact words and then use that. And sometimes you can even say like, I really want to be able to get through this, or I want to make you happy. I want to make an amends here. I just don't know the best way to go about it. I'm trying. Can you help me out? How can we move through this? What do you need from me in this moment? So asking her these questions, she will often give you the information that she needs. So when it comes to trust and respect, I think it's gonna, it's gonna depend upon, and if anybody, if you want, you can also send me a direct message um, to tell me about the situation so I can better understand and then I could speak to a specific topic or I can continue to try to address it generally. Any questions going more into that? Cause then I can address it a little bit more if you want. Can you say something about trust issues that are much older than the relationship? Okay, great question. So one of the things that I do with um, in my programs and with my clients is with any trigger. So our relationships are there to help us to heal as is life and everybody that comes into it and triggers us. So whenever I'm feeling something, I get triggered whether it's with my partner and it feels really justified, I go into the body, I feel the physical sensations of the body. And while I'm in touch with the body, I'm asking, okay, what am I feeling right now? And I either identify an emotion or I have, I have some kind of story, like I feel disrespected or that I'm not being considered. I don't feel seen. I'm trying to find some story there. And then I go into, when have I felt this way in the past? And when is the first time that I felt this way? 
And ideally I go as far back into my childhood as I can and try to get some perspective on that core wound that is inside of me. Because until we heal that core wound, it will continue to get triggered. And I absolutely believe and have experienced that we can heal those core wounds and we no longer get triggered. I used to get triggered all of the time. I took pride in getting triggered because I was a self-respecting woman and I was standing up for myself and I, there was a lot of like fight in me. But then when I started to take responsibility for my triggers and I could see, okay, my partner's done something, it's triggered me. But if I stay focused on my partner, I'm not going to heal. We're going to continue to have that same trigger over and over and over again. You deal with that in that one moment, but then it comes up again. And that's why people are constantly repeating the same fights, the same problems, and the same patterns in a relationship because they're not doing that deeper healing. So there is, it is so essential to go in and do that deeper work. And that's where we want to see what am I making this mean and what is going on here? So if it's trust, when you do find that, then you go and you do that inner child work. I have a couple of different ways of how I work with it. I work with it somatically. I work with it through the work of Byron Katie. I'm also trained in the compassionate inquiry of Gabor Mate. And I'll go through a process to be able to see that what's going on deep inside is one of the, is potentially what has called forth this issue in my life. And in that, we want to be able to heal it so that we don't continue to drag it through our future. And it's also making that decision to want to heal that wound. So if somebody has trust issues, there's a couple of things that I look at. If so, Let's say somebody has a hard time trusting women or they have a hard time trusting men. One of the things that I'll go to is, can you trust yourself around? So let's say as a, I'm a woman and I don't trust men. So what I'm going to look at is, can I trust myself around men? And where can I not trust myself around men? Can I trust myself to set boundaries, to communicate my needs, to make requests, to be authentic, to not go into pleasing mode? And so I want to see where I don't trust myself, because in that contemplation, I'm empowering myself to be like, okay, well, here's how I, what the work that I can do so I can start to build that trust with myself. And in that, I'm going to start to be able to build my, my trust with men. The other thing that I would do is one of the um, tools that I love is coming from the work of Byron Katie. So let's take it. Let's say one of you has a hard time trusting women. So I would want to flush out all of the thoughts that you have about women. And we would, one of the ways that I do this is I use a judge your neighbor worksheet from the work of Byron Katie, and it will bring out all of the women are like this and I want them to do this and I need them to do this and they shouldn't do this. So we'll bring out a lot of the, the thoughts that you have, and then we will take them through inquiry. And as you do that, you're going to see what's underneath. Where are these thoughts coming from? If you recognize that they're coming from a mother wound, then we go back and we do that inner child work and we work with the mother wound. So it's so important to go back and work with that original core wound to then be able to show up in a, in a way where we're ready to have an open heart. And we wanna see when we're not trusting what that's doing for us. What is it protecting us from? What is the worst that could happen? Because if you can be okay with the worst that could happen and you develop the tools and the capability to be able to deal with that and that feels okay, then you no longer need to protect yourself by keeping your heart closed and not being able to trust somebody. How did that land for that question? And do you have more questions on that? Or do you have another question? That was a great one. Re regarding the weekend plans, what if she feels rejection when something is too planned? How to keep it spontaneous? What if she feels rejection when it's too planned? Can you help me to understand how she would feel like what, if she feels controlled or limited or how would she feel rejected if it's too planned and how to keep it spontaneous? Be ready at five for an evening out. And then you see where the evening unfolds. 
and you just do one thing and maybe you go for a walk and then you're going to go for a dinner and then she doesn't know what the next thing is going to be. And perhaps you don't also want to know. Um, and you want to be able to just feel into the moment and see what's going to go on. So you decide to meet at five o'clock. Would that work for the spontaneous nature of what it is that you're speaking to? Okay. If there happens some conflict by the weekend, how to let it go? You mean if conflict happens, can you ask that question in another way? So if conflict, if it happens, some conflict by the weekend, how to let it go? How to move through a conflict in order for, I need, I need a little help with that question. Okay. So if you have any other questions, bring them in. I will keep an eye there. And is how to gain respect. Okay, what kind of respect is it that you're looking for? Respect in what area? Because something that I see with respect, and also this comes up a lot with uh, trust, is that it can be compartmentalized. So when somebody says, I don't trust you, or I can't trust you, I will always have them break it down. Which ways do you not trust them? And which ways can you trust them? And I would do a similar thing, a similar approach for respect. So I would look at, okay, what are the ways that she does respect you? And what are the ways that she doesn't respect you? And first I would go, what are the ways, what, how do you, in what ways do you have respect for yourself? And where are you lacking respect for yourself? And what do you need to do to be able to respect yourself more? Okay, to be seen as a strong man, as a leader. So first I would get clear on what does it mean to be a strong man? How is it that you can lead? What are the characteristics of that? And start to list those out and then see how you can start showing up in that way. So we can all do this here. Perhaps take a couple uh, moments and put in the chat what for you, how does a strong man show up? How does a leader show up? What do they do? So one of the things that I think of it is it's somebody who takes initiative. It's also somebody who speaks their mind and is authentic. They don't go into a pleasing and accommodating if it's not aligned with them. So for me, a leader needs to know their values and their principles, and they stand by them no matter what. They're also somebody who is going to not um, uh, be avoidant. So be avoiding a difficult conversation or avoiding emotion or avoiding disappointment. So you're living by your values and your principles and you're knowing who you are, what you want, what your opinions are, what you stand for doesn't mean you always have to have the answer. So then also a leader for me is somebody who can say, you know, I don't know, or I made a mistake or at making amends and apologize. So being also be able to stay in your center. So that's another big thing that could go with a couple of the questions. How can she trust you and respect you that you're able to hold your center and not get taken by your emotions? I did my coaching training under John Gray, the man who wrote the books, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. And there's, I think probably 30 books I had that he wrote at this point. And one of the things that he put in there was that men have a tendency to get more defensive. So it's been something that I've been observing. Women are more empathetic and there's a lot of explanations behind that around the way that their brain is structured, estrogen, uh, all kinds of stuff in that if you want to be more respected and trusted, then you're going to want to really work on being able to take feedback, and especially if it's coming in a complaint or a criticism, and be able to empathize and respond instead of react. Your ability to hold your center, and it is hard when you've got complaints and criticisms, and that's absolutely something that I work on with the women where I help them to become aware of the way in which they are communicating, because it's really hard if your woman's coming at you and she's blaming and she's complaining and she's criticizing, and then she's wanting you to sit there and listen and not get defensive and empathize with her, which is 
what she wants in that moment. It's kind of an unrealistic expectation. But if you can learn to do this, oh my, she will be so open and surrendered. And you will also solve a lot of the problems just by learning and to be and by being able to listen in that space. Because it is really hard and she doesn't realize how hard it is. It's kind of like being in front of a firing squad and you either want to put the blindfold on or you want to run. But instead, <laughs> there, she's asking you to stand there with your arms open and your heart open and be like, okay, bring on the next thing, bring on the next thing. So if instead you can understand that sometimes women just need to be able to get it out when they've got all of this stress and this frustration inside of them, being able to talk it out is one of the best ways for them to get through their emotions. And specifically when they're stressed out and if they're stressed out about you or about somebody else, if they can just talk it out and you can hear and listen and validate and validation does not mean that you agree with it. Validation is that you are validating what she is feeling in that moment and what her experience is. So let's say you come home and then she starts the complaints and there's one complaint after another, after another. And most likely in your mind, you're coming up with a defense or you've got two points to match every one point of hers. And that maybe that's how the conversation will often unfold. But if instead you sit there and you listen, you listen, you listen, you listen, you let her get it all out. You under like, okay, I, I understand that you're feeling da, 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 da. don't just say, I understand. You got to say what you understood. Because when she feels heard and seen by you, already her nervous system is going to start to regulate. You can help her nervous system to regulate by telling back to her a summary of what it is that you have understood. Then at that point, by her talking and you listening, not problem solving, not justifying, not explaining, her cortisol levels have gone down, her oxytocin levels have gone up. So again, the oxytocin is coming in here. Oxytocin is the most important thing for bringing her cortisol levels down. It doesn't work the same for you in your body. You need something different. So if she is upset, angry, she's going to have high cortisol levels. If you get her to talk and you listen. Now, if you don't listen or you get reactive and defensive, or you go into justifying or explaining, then it's not going to work. The oxytocin is not going to get produced. But if you can listen and you can empathize and you can validate, that will solve 80% of the problem, maybe 100%. But she will then feel better inside of her body and being able to then get through that and then problem solve is going to be so much better than trying to do it when she's at the peak of her stress. How's that landing? Is that making sense? Do you have any more questions around that? Okay, thank you. The woman I'm talking about is often in her masculine. So I'm curious about being too much in my feminine energy when expressing how I'm feeling and then not being seen as strong. Okay, so when it comes, if she's in her masculine and she's not coming forth and, and connecting and communicating, then it very easily can push you into your feminine and then you're the one that's wanting connection. And so I would encourage you in that moment for you so if it's about you expressing how you're feeling, I wouldn't go too much into processing that. No, I, I don't know exactly what it is that you're saying that you're feeling, um, but processing your feelings and your emotions with your woman is something that can put her into her masculine. So if you're going to her for constant emotional support, that's going to produce oxytocin in you and it's going to produce vasopressin in her. Vasopressin is one of the main male hormones. So if she's supporting you, it's going to produce that in her and you're on the receiving end of it. So you're going to be getting the oxytocin. Ideally, you want it the other way around. So if when you're in that emotional standpoint, you can, you're alone, you take some time alone, you taking time alone and being and resting, that will increase your testosterone. For you, when your cortisol levels are high, you need testosterone to increase in order to bring your cortisol levels down. And so if you are in an upset place and you start to try to talk about it and process it in that moment with her and sharing with her and asking her for emotional support, 
most likely that's going to continue to increase the estrogen or the cortisol in your body. And that will not bring your stress levels down, which means you're going to have a hard time finding your center, getting composed, getting clarity of mind to be able to work through this. Now, if it's about expressing how you're feeling in regards to the relationship, it's, there's a couple ways about going about addressing that. And I'm I'm a little hesitant to start troubleshooting it because I don't know exactly what it is that you're addressing for what it is that you're feeling, but there are ways of going about it in a more masculine way where you're then not coming across as needy or um, maybe even like needing the reassurance, like really wanting to hold your center in it because the more you go there, it will push her more into her masculine. So the more that you are clear and centered within yourself and you can express yourself from that way. So making a request or, um, and also something to take into consideration, here's the attachment style. So if you are more of an anxious attachment style and you're attracting dismissive women, which is very often the case. So if you're more in your feminine, you're probably gonna attract masculine women. And if you are more anxious, then you're gonna be attracting more of a dismissive partner. We often will attract the, our opposites and that's how polarity works. So being able to get clear on how it is that you are showing up that is in you in your feminine and what you could do differently for this to be you approaching this issue from your masculine center will help her then to get more into her feminine. Is that making sense? Does that land? I have I have a program for men that I'll talk about in a bit. It's a a three month program where I give a lot of stuff around how to be in your masculine, the way that you drop into your feminine, the way you shut down your woman's feminine, about how to address your emotions and her emotions. So understanding how men process emotions, how women process emotions, the difference around that. And then I do go into, because I think that there's a lot of confusion right now around the masculine and feminine dynamics, because there's a lot of push for women to be in their masculine and to be strong and independent. And there's a lot of push, especially I think on the men to be more emotional and more sensitive and more vulnerable. But in that, then what's happening is men are becoming too feminine. The polarity of the relationship is getting lost or it's getting reversed. And then there's frustrations around that. So this is a big thing that I address in the program, uh, Lead Your Love, which the, the link has just gone up for it, where I will go into about how to develop and strengthen your masculinity in multiple different ways, how to communicate with the feminine, how to make love with the feminine, how to navigate the feminine in conflict. So how to show up in a, either when you're in a fight, how to address the fight. So how to initiate that kind of conversation, because a lot of men will avoid it. They're like, there's a problem. I don't want to have to deal with that. I don't want to have to go into a whole process. We're in a neutral ground right now. I'm not going to initiate a conversation that's going to open up a two hour, three hour, three day issue. And so instead, I try to help men to be able to one, initiate and hold the container, and then also how to clean up any residue after a conflict. And then I also go into really how you can show up in your masculine, building that trust, building that respect, having that presence and invoking her feminine. So helping her to want to surrender to you, because the more you show up in your masculine, the more she will show up in her feminine. And when you are not, when you're diminishing your masculine presence in some way or another, then that can push her into her masculine. So if you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, then she feels like she needs to step in and do it. And she can't rely on you and she's all alone and she's independent and that's going to diminish her oxytocin. It's going to produce more testosterone in her body. So that oxytocin gets produced when she doesn't feel like she's all alone. She doesn't feel like she's all alone when you see her, when you hear her, when you support her and you help her out with things. But then you want to be careful around what you're helping her out with, because our to-do list is never ending. And one one of my partner, when he was like, Justine, I am not going to help you with that to-do list, because if I start ticking stuff off, there's more that's going to get added. And it's so true. So sometimes you need to know how to help women when they're in their masculine and how to help them get into their feminine. Because when she's in her masculine, that could push you into your feminine. 
you need to be more masculine than her. Now, when she's in her masculine, she's in do mode and she goes into overdrive and she's trying to get stuff done. That does not mean that you need to start doing more than she's doing and doing it faster than she's doing. What she needs is your centeredness and your clarity to be able to help her to calm down in those moments. One of the best ways you can help her to de-stress, she needs oxytocin. So one, I said to get her to talk, get her to talk, help her to feel heard, get her to talk about her emotions. And the other one is affection. When you hold her, so if you, even if you just give her a 10 second hug, that 10 seconds will start to produce oxytocin or get her on the couch, hold her and cuddle her. That will produce oxytocin. Those are two of one of the, two of the best ways for you to help her to shift out of her masculine mode, her stress mode, where she will usually go into overdrive and start and start to do things that she doesn't even need to do because she's just stressed out and trying to catch up with life. So that's where you need to come in with your clarity, your lucidity, your center and say, here's what needs to happen right now. You know, to rest, you guys are brilliant when it comes to that. It's like you get tired and you get exhausted. It's like rest is a non-negotiable thing. This is just what has to happen. We get tired, exhausted, and we go harder, stronger, faster. We don't have the lucidity that you have when it comes to it. And we judge you for it, which just isn't fair. And so being able to start to bring that to her attention in a loving way and a very centered way. So those are some of the ways, and then she can start to trust you. And that's another thing. If you start to process, and this one, this is a bit of a controversial topic, but I'm going to go in there. If you are processing your stuff with her all the time, she's going to have a hard time trusting you and respecting you because she wants to know that you're there for her. And if in that moment, she's like, okay, he's really struggling right now. He's not available to be there for me and support me. So one, she won't be able to come to you and rely on you for that. And she's supporting you for it. So she's going to have a hard time being able to, and maybe not say it with her words, but she will have a hard time being able to trust you in that moment. So going to your friends, going to your therapist, going to your family to be able to process some of that stuff and not always bringing that to her. You can come and share it with her afterwards. Absolutely. She wants to know what's going on in your life and she wants to be there for you, but just be careful about how much you do that because it can have an impact on it. Women are saying they want men's vulnerability, but then afterwards it's making them pull back and then they feel guilty for pulling back. And I already explained a little bit about what's happening when you do this on a hormonal level. That's so true. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's not the popular thing to say, but it, when I have said this to the women, they've also said the same thing. Because I, I, I talk about these things in the, in the women's program, because women are saying, I want you to talk more. I want you to do this more. I want you to. And then when the guys do it, it doesn't land well, and then everybody's confused. Okay. How can you stay in the masculine when you have a period of weakness? Take time for yourself. Do the things that you need to do. Take rest, get your self-care, get the support that you need. So if it's a therapist, if it's a coach, if it's a friend, like really hold in the things that you need in that moment and communicate it. So I do not like having a weakness is not a contradictory factor to being masculine. When I think of, so in Tantra, we've got masculine is consciousness and feminine is energy. So in a moment where you're really emotional, you can always hold the consciousness in the background. Eckhart Tolle's a phenomenal teacher. Power of Now is brilliant for this. When you've got all that going on, maintain the witness. So more meditation is going to always help when it comes to that. Taking time alone and doing nothing is going to help because that's where you get, you will produce more testosterone. And that's where you will find the confidence. You will find the courage. You will find clarity to be able to help you move out of that. So in those moments, communicate to your partner. So, hey, right now I'm struggling and I need some space 
for, you know, right now I'm going through this. I'll process and talk about it with you later on. So you can let her know what's going on because when you guys go into a mood and you get upset, you withdraw, it triggers her. A lot of times, some of the work that I need to do with women is that when I said, you know, when your man gets upset, you often get upset with him for being upset. And I did this at one point as well. And my partner, thankfully, said, you know, can I have space to be in a mood? Because when I get in a mood and you get in a mood, then I have to deal with your mood on top of mine. And he's like, I hold space for your moods. And I was like, that is so fair. And that is absolutely <laughs> of what's going on here. So yeah, I will learn to hold space for your moods. And when I'm working with women around that, what's happening is that they're worried that you're upset with them. So they need to know when you're in a moment of weakness and if you're withdrawing and you're going inwards, then just say, hey, I'm going through a difficult period right now. It's got nothing to do with you. I just need some space. Let her know what she can do, what she can't do so that she doesn't feel like she's infringing upon you. And then continue maybe just to communicate with her along the way. And absolutely know that masculinity does not mean that you always have to be high vibe in your best all the time. Maintaining lucidity, giving her the information that she needs so she doesn't feel like she's done something wrong. Because when you get upset and you're in a bad space, her first interpretation is going to be, okay, what have I done? Is he upset with me? So giving her that reassurance is going to help you to be able to get that space. Because if you say, I need some space, and, and if she's anxious attached, she's going to have a hard time giving it to you. Great question. Thank you for that. Okay. The pull between being vulnerable and remaining masculine. There, there's a fantastic article that um, a man that wrote on this. And what I would say is not to focus on being vulnerable, like, Vulnerable, if we go into the definition of it, there's something there around, okay, how do I want to express this? Vulnerability is something where it's, it's like coming from this weakness. David Hawkins, who wrote the book, Letting Go, he speaks about getting to a place. He has a phenomenal chapter on pride. If you've ever read the book, it's an excellent book. His chapter on pride is excellent, especially for people who are spiritual seekers. And he speaks about getting to a place to where you're invulnerable. So when you're working through something, usually, like, as I said before, it's best to do that on your own or with your therapist, with your coach, with your friend, and then to come back and share the results with her afterwards. Like, Hey, this is what I was going through. It's kind of how I will advise coaches or people who are on social media is like, don't share your stuff when you're in the middle of it. Like, hold that, work through that for yourself. And then you can come and share, what did you learn from it from pe with people? And, and I would say the same for you, like be able to work through your stuff and then come to her from a place of like, okay, here's what was going on for me. So you're being transparent, you're being open, you're being accountable and you're not going into this place of necessarily of vulnerability. Um, and this is something more that I go into also in the lead your love program around just like really how to navigate that around because that shared Brene Brown says nothing creates intimacy more than shared vulnerability, but it's about how you go into it. So having that kind of clarity within yourself. Okay. More questions are coming through. I'll leap back, loop, loop back around to that one. If we have more time. So please repeat around about the hormonal level, maintain the witness. Okay. Which hormonal level I could go on hormones for the next like five hours. I love the topic of hormones. So which hormone level did I, what did I reference that you want me to go into? Can you pop it, pop in that question there again? So I can know where, what you want me to reference. Okay. Pop it in. I'll, I'll loop back around it. Um, testosterone or oxytocin? Testosterone and holding space. 
Okay. I'm going to try to see. Okay. When, when men, when you are stressed or you're angry, because when you're angry, you're stressed, whenever your cortisol levels are high, what you need to bring your cortisol levels down, you need your testosterone to go up. There are multiple ways that you can increase your testosterone. And I go into this in the lead your love program. I have a whole lecture on how to increase your testosterone through your actions, through your food, through your daily habits. One of the best ways for you to increase your testosterone is have alone time. Man cave time is so absolutely essential. And so many men are compromising on their man cave time, on their alone time, because the modern man is more involved in his family. He's more involved in his relationship. And in that men are finding that they are finding that they're, they feel guilty when they take time for themselves because they want to be with their kids. They want to be with their partner. They want to help out at the house. And in that, if you don't take time for yourself, you work all day and you burn up your testosterone. And then you come home and you go straight into doing chores and straight into helping the kids with homework. You are then increasing your estrogen levels, which is going to drop your testosterone even more. If you can take time for yourself and you can just take 15, 20 minutes of man cave time where you're not talking to anybody, you're not doing anything. Don't go and scroll social media. That's not going to help you to really rest and rejuvenate. Just sit and do nothing. It wouldn't work for me. I'm a woman. We don't know how to do nothing, but you guys are brilliant in this. And it does, women do not understand it or comprehend it. If you're sitting and doing nothing, we think we can come and talk to you. We think we can pop in and ask a quick question and that it's not going to matter. But when we do that, we can completely erase the man cave time and what it's doing for you. So just sitting and resting and doing nothing is super important. And for you to make time and space for that. Another thing that can help with testosterone is being successful. So I interview men for my women's program. And when the women join the program, they get to listen to all of these interviews. And one of the things I will ask is like, what do you want from your partner? How can she support you? How do you want her to be when you're, when you're in a mood, when you're stressed out, when you're upset about something? And one of the guys said, just to let me be, I want to go into my workspace and I want to make some money. And I was like, brilliant, because what's happening when he goes and he makes some money, he's increasing his testosterone levels. So his testosterone levels go up, his cortisol levels come down, he's less stressed, he's more clear, he's more focused, and he's more confident. So learning how to build your testosterone. What about meditation for testosterone? Yes. You're, you're sitting there. Well, it, it also depends upon what kind of meditation you're doing, but I would say meditation is going to be a great practice no matter what. So did that answer the questions around the, the testosterone? Um, this female does my hormones reinforce that plate, that place. Hmm. I don't understand what that was. Okay. Meditation also helps with increasing testosterone. Just didn't spoke about that earlier of, okay. Okay. I, sorry. I got lost in that conversation. Okay. Um, wow, we've gone for 50 minutes this whole time. Fantastic questions. So I wanted to start to, to conclude and tell you about the men's program that I have. It's starting in about two weeks. It starts on April 17th. It's a three month long program where there are lots of videos. So I put a video out every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we've got six modules so there's tons of content around getting to know yourself and understand yourself as a man, because what I see happening is that women are constantly trying to make men into women because we think that that's going to make us happy. We're going to be more compatible. It's going to be easier if you would just empathize and be more emotional and be more sensitive and talk more. But all of those things that women are telling you to do, if you start to do it, they're not going to like it. They're not going to be as attracted to you. They're not going to want to have sex with you. And the attraction of the relationship is going to start to diminish. And then it's going to push her into her masculine. She's going to be stressed out and no one's happy and the relationship ends. That's a bit of a drastic conclusion there. But what it is, is that I help men to start to also understand themselves because and start to be okay with that. So for instance, women are saying they want you to talk more. But really what they really want, they want you to bring in some stuff, but they want you to listen. They want to have those kinds of conversations. But if you start to talk more than she does, 
then her attraction will start to diminish because then your estrogen is going up and she's not getting to talk and feel heard. So her oxytocin is not going to be increasing. So I explain a lot of these things where there's confusing mixed messages that are going out there. And what men have found is I've had several men say, Justine, thank you for giving me permission to be masculine again, because women will sometimes be picking away at that. And so just to also understand yourself. So some men are like, thank God, I don't have to talk as much as her. I started to feel bad because I couldn't match what she was doing in a conversation or how to be able to know what your needs are like alone time and how to communicate to that to your woman in a way that she's not going to feel rejected or abandoned. She's not going to get upset and disappointed with you. So being able to understand your needs and how you function as a man. And I break this down, as you can see, I bring in a lot of hormone stuff. I go into the brain structure, which is another really cool area when it comes to all of this. And I'll talk about the ways in which you guys communicate differently, how you process emotions. This is a huge one that I find really important in the men's program because uh, there's so much emphasis around emotions in modern times right now. And a lot of that, because women are very attuned to their emotions, we have mothers, we have therapists, we have wives and girlfriends all telling the men about how they should handle their emotions. But guys, you're built differently. If you start to handle your emotions the way that she does, you're probably going to get more stressed and more confused, and it's not going to actually help you to feel better. So I explain what works for you, how your hormonal system is structured, how your brain is structured and what's going to help you around processing your emotions and what helps her. Because sometimes guys are giving advice to women based on what works for them. Like, honey, just relax, let it go. Don't let it bother you. (laughs) It's not going to help her. (laughs) She can't do that. So I help you to understand the ways of how she processes her emotions and what she needs and for you, for yours. So a lot of that will, will come in in those different directions. And then just how to really help her to get into her feminine because women are so much in their masculine. I was hugely in my masculine. I have a very strong masculinity. Learning about femininity was a big process. I had no clue about it. And I never would have thought 20 years ago or 25 years ago that I would be teaching women about it. (laughs) So it was definitely something that was a big journey for me. And learning how to be able to get into my feminine has been a big process. So I will help you to learn how to support your woman on being in her feminine because there are ways that you can do it as i said when she's in her masculine you need to be more masculine than her which is not your default response when she goes into her masculine a lot of guys are not interested in competing for the masculine role so they go into passivity but then when you go into passivity she goes more into her masculine and then it's just a downward spiral from there so being able to address these different situations where you can show up, how you can show up to get, to become more trusted, to become more respected by her, how you can address and hold the conversation. So when you're in a moment of conflict, how can you take space that you need in a really connected way, in a conscious way, but still taking space. If you're in a fight and you're amped up, that is a really good time to take space. Do not try to talk through that. When you're emotional, there's stuff in your brain that starts to shut down. You need to take space so you can regain yourself, get your center and get your clarity. Now, how can you do that in a way where you're really coming through from your masculine presence so you can go and get composure? You're not setting her off and making her even more angry and she feels supported and seen by you. So I go through all of these things and how So this program is also for, it's for as much for singles as it is for people, men who are in relationships. I've had both go through and it's not just going to help you to better relate to your woman in a relationship, but to all women. One of the guys was like, I have a better relationship with my housemate, with my cousin, with my grandmother. He just said, this has helped in every single area. And also to be able to heal your relationship to the feminine. So whether it's a mother wound or ex-girlfriends. So those are a lot of the topics that I'm going to be addressing. There's a lot of video content that you go through at your own pace. And then I do live group coaching calls. And that's a really powerful container because coming together and getting to be vulnerable with men in a space where we're going to look at your relationship stuff. We're going to be 
working through that, working through your deeper wounding, what is it that's holding you back from really being able to step into your power and being your potential? And when I've run this program in the past, I would say one of the favorite thing of all of the men are those live group coaching calls. Also on the platform, it's going to be held on the Live Tantra platform. You, I am available Monday through Friday for you to ask any questions that are going on, whether it's about the videos that I'm putting out there, or it's about the things um, of which is whatever it is that's going on in your life. You pose a question and I'll go into it. So I do tons of coaching in this program. So with that said, any questions that you want to ask, and we'll start to, to wrap this up and I'll take questions for a couple of minutes. And then I have one final thing that I would like to do with you before we sign off. Thanks for the session. It's been very enlightening. Great. A very impromptu Q&A. <laughs> Great. Really a lot of information. Thanks a lot. Yes, I. Great. Okay, so what I would love if there's no questions is I'd love to hear one takeaway that you have from this session tonight. So what's one thing that landed when maybe, I, maybe you didn't learn anything new, but something landed, it reminded you of something. What's one takeaway that you have from this evening? Takeaway, communication is key. Yes, absolutely to stay in my masculine. Beautiful. Yeah. Clarity on oversharing and being too vulnerable. Good one. It's confusing because the ladies are saying it and society is pushing you for it. But there is a, that was a great question. And one that I definitely go more into that processing your emotions in the moment brings her into her masculine. Yeah. Good, good one. These are great takeaways. Listening and don't take criticism personally. Yes. Good one. Good luck. It's hard. It's hard for anybody. And if men are more defensive than women, which I'm still processing that one, but um, it's a really hard thing to do. But if you can learn to do that, you're going to have the respect of so many people and definitely your woman. Just when you take it in, listen validate, empathize. Great. Well, I talk a lot about all of this stuff on my Instagram account. Come on over there, join the community. I'm open for questions. And if any of you feel inclined to join, lead your love, love to have you in there. Message me if you have any questions. Mm -hmm.